In today's lesson, we are going to be learning about hardware. Hello, everybody. In this lesson, we are going to learn what digital devices are. Digital means information stored electronically. Devices like laptops, tablets, and smartphones are digital devices. We can give them instructions and information. They can then work out from this information what to do. The same as when your teacher asks you to do a task. They give you instructions and you then carry them out. But you must think about all the steps needed to do that task. You use your brain for this and things you have learned growing up. How does a digital device do this? A digital device does not have a brain like you. Instead, it has a computer microprocessor unit, often just called a processor or a CPU. It is made up of extremely thin layers of metals less than one millimeter in thickness. Printed on this metal layer is hundreds of billions of microscopic switches that can either be on or off. A bit like you using a switch on the wall to turn a light on and off. Except one computer processor has more switches than all the light switches in the world. By turning these switches on and off in different ways, it can work out lots of maths calculations very quickly. Want to know how quickly and how fast? It would take you a whole year to count to one billion. In the time it takes you to clap your hands, a smartphone can do three billion calculations. A laptop can do 100 billion in the same time, and a desktop computer can do 500 billion. Wow! I bet you wish you could answer your math questions that fast. Having brains is good, but it's not very helpful if you can't remember what to do. You use your memory to remember things. Remembering things you have just been told is called short-term memory. Remembering things you learnt in the past is called long-term memory. This is where the motherboard comes in. This connects the memory, storage, and processor together and helps them work as a team. It also helps us connect other devices like headphones. Just like you feel your brain gets very hot when doing lots of maths questions, a processor gets very hot when doing all those billions of calculations a second. Also, just like you, a processor does not work very well when it gets too hot. So sometimes we need to help it keep cool by placing a large piece of metal on top called a heat sink to help drain away the heat. And to help the heat sink, a fan is put on top to blow cool air through the gaps in the heat sink. Now the brain of our device is nice and cool, and it can access the instructions in the memory. But it can't do anything. Do you know why? Just like you need energy to work, our device also needs energy. For a desktop computer, this is provided by a power supply that plugs into a wall socket with a lead. It then provides power to the motherboard and the hard drive. Devices like tablets and smartphones use built-in batteries to get their power. The last thing to do is put all these parts inside a case to protect them, and our digital device is ready to go. That's strange. It doesn't appear to be doing much. Oops. We have not given it any information or tasks to do, so it will just sit there doing nothing. To be able to give it information, we need to add some extra devices. For this desktop computer, we need a keyboard and mouse to be able to interact with it. We could also add a microphone so we can talk to it or record sounds. Tablets and smartphones use touchscreens with on-screen keyboards. But it's still not working. We can't see or hear what it is doing. We need to add a screen so we can see the information the device is showing us. We also need speakers or headphones so we can hear sounds the device is making. That's better. 
Now we can communicate with the device, and it can communicate with us. Let's look at what we have learned in this lesson. Digital devices use processors to perform calculations quickly and automatically. A processor does billions of calculations using billions of microscopic switches. A digital device needs a processor, memory, storage and power to work. A digital device needs ways for us to interact with the device. Well done. As a class think about what other digital devices there are. Goodbye for now. See you for the next lesson.